again and again and again. But I'm also going to be real quick. smaller banks are failing. Yeah, I'm much worse than a business major. I'm a policy major. The federal takes over unsound banks is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the same people who guarantee that depositors won't lose their money. Most every Friday now, the FDIC is seizing several banks. You haven't seen these takeovers happening because they're done secretly at night to make sure that there's no needless panic by depositors. But last week, we were given extraordinary access to one of these operations because the FDIC wants you to see what happens to your money when your bank has failed. They're going to start at one branch, pull the cash out, take it inside the bank. This is a team of FDIC agents preparing to seize a bank outside Chicago. What we need to do is we need to pull the, uh, the corporate records. They've checked into this hotel under a fictitious name, CB and Associates. To prevent a run on the bank, they don't want anyone to know who they are or why they're here. You all know that this is for the closing of Heritage Community Bank. Cheryl Bates and Arthur Cook are in charge of the operation that has been given the code name Happy. Strange, considering what they're about to do. Do not discuss outside of this room what is going on, what we're here for. They're here to seize all five branches of Heritage Community Bank, a 40-year-old local bank providing savings, student loans, mortgages, and checking. But like so many others recently, Heritage made ruinous bets on real estate. Sheila Baer is chairman of the FDIC. How many banks failed last year? 25. How many do you expect to fail this year? It's going up. There have been 16 already uh, now. And uh, so our, our loss projections Wake up. are the banks are up. failing. We're having to increase premiums on banks uh, to address the loss projections going forward. It's a very distressed environment right now. I wonder if you have a number in mind of how much the FDIC is prepared to pay right. for bank failures in 2009. Right. Well, uh, we have we make a five-year projection uh, that for the next five years we had, we project over sixty-five billion dollars on bank closings. Sixty-five uh, billion. Sixty-five billion. Some of that was about to be spent on the imminent failure of Heritage Community Bank. It held twelve thousand deposits totaling more than two hundred million dollars. The FDIC team waited for the last customer to leave. Cheryl Bates prepared to go in. What sorts of specialists do you have on this team? We have accountants, we have asset specialists who specialize in loans, we have uh, people who specialize in just the physical facilities, and we have a group uh, of investigators that come in and do a review on the reasons for the bank failure. Really, your whole team could come in and run the bank? Yes. Four months ago, the FDIC and state of Illinois ordered the bank to stop risky lending and raise cash but Heritage couldn't find new investors. The night of February 27th, no one at the bank knew that the end was minutes away. The FDIC walked into all five branches at once. The chief executive, John Safir, was told that the bank that was his life's work was no longer his. We waited outside as they delivered the news to the employees. With Heritage Bank, your pay stopped at 6 p.m. At 6.01, you went on a pay which was paid by the FDIC. Unused vacation time, you will be paid for it. You will not lose it. In that moment, Operation Happy looked pretty grim. Correct. Because I would say... Dude, there's something I absolutely love about just fucking government bureaucrats coming in and going, hey, we seized the bank. We're still going to pay you. We're from the government, and we're here to help. It's like the exact opposite of what, like, Dumbass, uh, you know, uh, dumbass fucking Reaganite Republicans believe is the wrong thing. But like so much of what you take for granted would simply just fall apart if fucking guys like this didn't exist. OK, I love that shit. Say a large majority of the employees don't know that the bank is in trouble and that it's about to close. We want it to be as seamless as possible for your depositors so no depositor loses any money at all. And they reacted uh, somewhat with dismay and shock that we were there. Um, and it's, it, it is a very trying period for them. So it is an end to that whole chapter of their lives. When we walk in, we are uh, appear to be the bad guys. I mean, some of those people have been there more than 20 years. And those are the ones who take it the hardest. 
because they feel that they have put their life into it and now it's no longer there. Make sure that no one comes in without FDIC badges. The employees now work for the FDIC. A public notice went up and that was the signal to a team of nearly 80 people to take over the bank. They took control of the bank website and added a notice that all deposits were safe. The beauty of it is you don't even know about it. You like barely are aware of it. It happens literally over the weekend, over the course of fucking one weekend, just like it did with SVB and your, your bank account doesn't change, the money there doesn't change, and you can just go out and like take the money out perfectly and with ease. Then they started an inventory of all the assets and liabilities. What's happening right now? We're getting the bank personnel assigned with their FDIC counterparts. The accounting people are meeting with our accounting managers. And then we have an investigations group that comes in and does a review of the bank. They broke the news to the media and prepared to reopen the bank Saturday morning as usual. What do you expect from the customers? I think the customers will, some of them will come in with a sense of, of fear. Fear created the FDIC in 1933 after the depression set off panics that wiped out even healthy banks. We've been around for 75 years. Nobody's ever lost a penny of insured deposits. No, no depositor no, has ever lost a penny no. since the FDIC I mean, come on, went dude. into business. That's right, of insured deposits. That's and these pieces of shit have the audacity to say the fucking federal government doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. There's nothing that is as successful. Sorry, not to... Not to fucking glaze up the, the government as much, but like, goddamn, dude. Absolutely right, which is why you need to make sure you blow the insured deposit limits, but no, no one's ever lost a penny. And the insured deposit limit is what? Right now it's 250000 That's the base limit. When the FDIC comes in and makes depositors whole at a bank that has failed, right. is that tax money? No, it is, uh, it is money from our reserves, which, and we are funded by insurance premiums that are assessed on banks. So, no, it, it is not taxpayer money. FDIC Chairman Sheila Baer is a former Treasury official and professor of finance who's written children's books on the wisdom of saving. Maybe some of the CEOs on Wall Street should have read the children's books. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> Maybe so. Baer warned two years ago that bad mortgages threatened the financial system. Now she's managing the biggest bank failures in years, including the collapse of Washington Mutual and last summer's sudden failure of IndyMac in California. We were told we would get in. We Stay open an extra hour! When IndyMac failed, you were watching these scenes on television yes, of people I was. lining yes. up outside the bank like it was 1932. Yes, it was. It was what amazing. did you think of that? So I think people just forgot that banks do fail and how the FDIC works. Their money was safe. It was safe. It was probably the safest place in the world to have your money because we, we were operating the institution at that point. What sort of hit was that on your balance yeah. sheet? I think we ended up to, uh, it was over $9 billion for a $33 billion. Yes, it was very stiff. The question becomes, how many times can the FDIC do that? I've got Bank of America. That shit can't fail, right, brother? If Bank of America fails, it's over. Like, that, that's, that's kind of the way I see it. Like, it can. Okay, but the way I see it is, is like if Bank of America failed, that means literally everything has failed. You know what I mean? It, you're already in. You're already in the the Mad Max future that you are afraid of. Anyway. I mean, by the way, these uh these banks have failed. But I mean like full blown collapse. Um do you keep all your money in banks? It's easier to do it in stocks. Yeah, well.
Bank of America has biggest loss in bond portfolio among peers. What I personally, what I, from what I understand, Bofa and others um, have uh, still additional scrutiny since uh, 2008 that they are beholden to that have not been um, deregulated in the same way that SVB has because it's like 50 to 250 billion in assets puts you in a different category. If you're 250 plus, then you have to keep, you have to maintain some, uh, some level of, of liquidity in, uh, so that you can, you don't have like any kind of issues and you can pay back, uh, people pay back depositors in the event of crisis. 109 billion in unrealized losses on Bank of America's balance sheet with 150 billion in mortgage backed assets. Bofa also funds pipelines and cop cities, so there's that. I mean, yeah. Yeah, they they do that. They do everything. Of course they do. They're a bank. What don't they fund? What's Bofa? Both of these nuts. What do you mean? Why would you ask that question? That At what point is the FDIC broke? The FDIC is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. So if we need to, we try not to and don't want to, but if we need to, we can borrow from Treasury to uh, make up for any shortfall. So the FDIC never goes broke? We don't go broke. No, we're, we are the government. We're backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Exactly. The FDIC is similar to Social Security in that respect. But customers at the former Heritage Community Bank outside Chicago weren't so sure about the safety of their money. On Saturday morning, the bank reopened on time, morning. and the FDIC's Ricky McCullough stood at the front door. The people who were coming in this morning, what were they asking you? Can I still write checks? Uh this is my favorite question. So U.S. dollars backed by nukes, but when banks fail and if Fed don't bail out, what's the use? This is why Bitcoin was invented. Bro, you think when the dollar collapses, there's going to be fucking Bitcoin? What are you talking about, dude? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Do you not understand anything? We're literally over here sucking the government cock, praising regulation, praising some assurances, and, like, confidence instilling moves that the federal government has made because financial collapse has occurred in the past. And you turn around and go, no, more deregulation is a necessity. Like, what are you going to do with your fucking Bitcoin when the when the dollar has collapsed? When, when the nukes are no longer a, a viable way to, to instill confidence in the dollar? What are you going to do? How are you going to work with the Bitcoin? What can you currently buy with Bitcoin? Before you fucking nerds get in here, you can't buy a $5 a month subscription to avoid the top of the hour ad break, okay? So it doesn't matter. There's no value. Okay? Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Okay? You can also get gifted a sub. Some of you crypto nerds, if you have a lot of crypto that is, you know, converted or valued on the basis of uh, how much it costs to own that crypto in fiat currency, okay? Use some of that fiat currency to allow others to... Avoid the top of the hour ad break by gifting them. Yen Show, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Sakura Gore, thank you for the 25 gifted subs, allowing 35 total people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Here's the three-minute ad break now. People be like, uh, Bitcoin is not backed by fiat currency, sir. It's decentralized. And then I ask him, how many dollars you have in your fucking wallet? And you don't say 0 0.000017 BTC. You say, you know, however many fucking dollars you have. <laughs> right? No, stupid people say that.
Motherfuckers are going to be running around in a post-apocalyptic universe. Motherfuckers are going to be running around in a post-apocalyptic universe being like, uh, in my USB, which I can't currently plug into a computer because unfortunately the electricity grid is off. I promise you, I have 0.17 BTC. Trust me. Can you please become my private security? I will pay you. 9.12. Let's fucking go, dude. I will trade you one slurp juice for an iodine tablet, sir. Can I get one of those suck straws, please? <laughs> I have now realized that my slurp juices are no longer viable on my apes. All my apes gone. I need a real slurp juice, as in uh, one of those suck straws that clean the water automatically. Uh, can I access my safe deposit box? Uh, can I use my ATM machine? And to all of those questions, you answered what? Yes. Customer Bill Hess showed up on a mission with an empty briefcase. He intended... Yeah, advocating for crypto when the FDX and SVB failed back to back, but the people with money in FDX are just fucked while the depositors at SVB are already got their money back. It's pretty funny considering... Uh, funny position to take considering... Additionally funny when you consider that like we are currently watching the government protocol set in place to ensure the depositors are safe. Like, and these motherfuckers are still turning around and be like, no, crypto's better. <laughs> yeah. To leave with all of his money. We'd be glad to answer any questions for you. I don't care anymore. He said, I don't care anymore. And so I became a little concerned. So I, I came inside. And uh, one of the things that he told me as he opened up his briefcase, he said, well, I don't have a gun in here. So I said, well, that's good. I can't wait. McCullough explained to Hess and his wife, Audrey, that their savings were safe. So if you have a single account, that's 250 If you have a single account, that's 250 So now that's 500 Hess's briefcase was empty when he came in and empty when he came out. We just thought we were going to see closed and the doors locked. <laughs> yeah. You know. So how do you feel now that you've talked to them? It's fine. Assured. Yeah. Assured. Yes. You feel fine. assured. Yes. Yes. So you had confidence in yeah. the FDIC. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Now, if they can't pay you, then I won't have confidence in them either. <laughs> One customer did take most of her money out, but for many, their concern was for the bank employees. I hope you all stay, and I hope they don't let anybody go. We're fine. Good. You just keep coming. Bitcoin doesn't fail, Bozo. Yes, it can only just be devalued. Technically, it's still not a failure, even if it's valued at zero dollars. <laughs> Back to see us. There are three ways the FDIC takes over a bank. It can close it and pay off depositors, run the bank itself, or more often, it'll try to find a buyer. Okay, we do have uh, bids from five different parties. A few days before the takeover of Heritage Community Bank, we were at the FDIC office in Dallas, where they were holding a secret online auction in hopes of finding a buyer for Heritage. I wanted to congratulate you. We've uh, chosen to accept one of your three bids. The winner was MB Financial, a $9 billion Chicago bank. The night of the takeover, all of Heritage Community's branches became MB Banks. Mitchell Feiger is MB's CEO. It's almost as if nothing had happened. Uh, almost nothing did happen. Uh, it's, it's the same products, it's the same services, it's the same people taking care of the same customers. It was a sweet and, deal uh, for Figer. The FDIC paid MB Financial $3.5 million. MB got all of the deposits, customers, and loans. If some of those loans go bad in the future, the FDIC will pick up at least 80% of the losses. We want... Don't these takeovers drive towards a monopoly? Um, a, a little bit, but also... Uh, what they should do is instead, uh, you know, have the government own them. If I were to do that, that's what I would do instead of uh, selling it off to another bank to turn it into another like regional bank. The scary and concerning thing about the situation isn't that banks can fail. It's the sheer number of people that don't even know the FDIC exists, let alone what it does. Good Lord, you have no idea, lol. That makes the bank run potential much higher. We need better public visibilities for critical agencies like this, or in a few years, we're going to have tech bros trying to disrupt and deregulate aviation and shit, and then we're all fucked.
Yeah, there are no libertarians in a bank run. Remember that. Wondered what Figer thinks of the health of banking today. You have to believe that dozens and dozens and dozens of more banks have to fail. But it's okay. What do you mean it's okay? It's okay because I think the process is smooth. Depositors are fully protected by, by an industry-funded FDIC insurance. Um, uh, and I think that uh, taking out the weak players and taking some capacity out of the industry is good. It's good for the industry. It's good for the survivors. It will produce at the end a much healthier banking system. The story will continue after this. If you can put Heritage Community Bank uh -huh. out of its misery, uh -huh. why can't you do the same with Citigroup? First of all, I, I don't talk about open operating institutions. We can only uh, uh -huh. uh, deal with the resolution of a bank, a, a federally chartered or state chartered depository institution. And uh, these very large institutions that are creating the headlines now, these are really very large financial organizations. So they ha it's more than a bank. It's a broker dealer. It's offshore operations. It's foreign deposits. We notice that while giant banks get bailed out, investors in failed community banks like Heritage get wiped out. Ben Bernanke, the chairman of the yes. Federal Reserve, says that the system is unfair for smaller banks, and that's just the way it is. Well, uh, I think that's true. And going forward, I think we need to really review the size of these institutions and uh, whether we should do something about that. Frank Bear surprised us when she suggested that maybe the mega banks, those bailed out by the taxpayers, shouldn't be allowed to exist in the future. No, I think that may be something that Congress needs to think about. Actually limit well, how size. big yes, a right. bank can be. Yeah. Well, you know, I think taxpayers rightfully should ask uh, uh, that if an institution has become so large that there is no alternative except for the taxpayers to provide support, should we allow so many institutions to exceed that kind of threshold? And the idea would be that no bank would grow so large that it posed a systemic, systemic risk, risk to right. the economy. Right. That'd be a very different world. It would be a different world. Because Heritage Community Bank was bought by MB Financial, the FDIC didn't have to pay depositors. Even accounts over the insurance limit were safe. For Cheryl Bates, it was her fourth closing this year, but certainly not her last. What do you want people to think when you tell them you're from the FDIC? I always want them to think that I'm one of the, the good guys and that we want to make sure that they get their money back should their bank fail, that they are going to be okay because the FDIC is there. The FDIC quite literally is, is I'm here from the government and I'm here to help in action. Part of the, probably part of the reason why you don't really hear about it a lot because it would kind of go against the idea that like big government is good uh, because it is actually an instance where big government is good. So Republicans don't want you to know about it. Capital owners don't want you to hear about it. 